Real estate agents are on the move. There's a ton of real estate agents getting ready to make a brokerage switch. So there's a pretty interesting article that I wanna share with you from Housing Wire that we're gonna review today. Now, the data that you're gonna see here is, I don't necessarily know how to say the, the company name, so my apologies. If anybody knows it, let me know in the chat. It's Relitics, Relitics, close enough. Um, so essentially, 2024 will see increased real estate agent mobility, according to this company. Now, you're going to see the methodology that they use here at the bottom. But what I was, what I found interesting, there's several points that I found interesting here. But let's let's look at the two charts that they include after their breakdown. After a multi-year decline in agent movement between brokerages, Relatix Agent Movement Index, so this is an index that they've been uh, curating shows a clear bottoming, bottoming out early fall of 2023 and increasing real estate agent mobility as we move into 2024. So essentially, as the graph goes down, that means less likely there's less movement in real estate agents from brokers to brokers. Now, you're going to, again, we're going to go into the methodology that they use, which will explain this a little bit more. But as you see the trend here, it's been falling, falling, falling here in the past two to three years. And here, what makes me, you know, have a little bit more faith in this particular index is the vast movement that happened in when the pandemic. So in 2020, so you saw a ton of movement where you saw a lot of steam be be gathered by EXP, by Real, by I don't think LPT was in existence at that point. If it was, my apologies. But you saw a lot of the online brokerages where there's over 20. Um, larger brokerages right now that are doing the online model, you saw a lot of agents flock to that model because out of necessity. There's a lot of brick and mortar that was shut down throughout that time, as you know. And as the state started opening up, you know, the brokerages that were brick and mortar stopped hemorrhaging a lot of agents. So this makes a lot of sense to me, at least. I didn't necessarily know that there is more people holding on to their brokerage or not making a movement. That was surprising to me. And I'm gonna show you a graph that, again, this is um, this is an interesting article. This is an interesting article and in data that I'm finding for the first time. So I thought it, thought it interesting to share. We can definitely call a bottom to the decline in agent movement, said Rob Keefe. So he's the founder and president. Agents will begin moving more between brokerages in 2024 as the market begins to normalize. However, the drop in active agent count, this is important, from a peak in 2022 will mean that the total number of experienced agent recruits will remain lower than what we are seeing in recent years. So while there is an expectation of real estate agents going to other brokerages, we're looking at a less amount of agents because they actually, in these graphs that you see, they don't factor agents that leave the industry altogether. They may have some industry and at some point, we understand that the baby boomers are aging out, that they are leaving the industry. So we have the largest transfer of wealth going from that generation into the others. So you have a lot of folks that are hanging up the key, uh, the key box. So of course they would be countered, counted in the experienced agents, but you have them leaving the industry altogether. You just have the industry shake up with the lawsuits and everything in between. You have lower amount of agents, especially experienced agents that stay in the business. All right, so this is the seasonality which the, the one point that I wanted to make here was uh, the fact that the seasonality here shows that at the beginning of the year, there's a lot more movement. There's a lot more movement at the beginning of the year. And while I recognize that in theory, in actuality, it hasn't proven the case, at least for our efforts here within our group. So as you know, I am part of eXp Realty and we've recruited hundreds of real estate agents directly to our real estate group. But what I've noticed is that most of the movement, at least the growth that we've seen happens towards the end of the year, at least here from our broker's perspective or our group's perspective, where October, November, and December, we would see a huge uptick in agents that join our group. At the beginning of the year, we haven't really experienced it, at least personally, all that much. So that's what has this particular, uh, this is what drew my attention to this particular graph. And this is actually the graph that made me want to make a video around this particular topic, because you see here at the beginning of the year, you have a huge uptick. And again, in theory, it sounds right. It sounds right that at the beginning of the year, you're reassessing expenses, you're doing all this stuff and you're starting with the new brokerage or doing some movement after the reset of capping. But 
in many cases if they happen to be calendar based and then you have a less amount of people willing to make a move towards the end of the year again for us from our experience it's been october november and december which has been more of our recruitment season where our numbers seem to grow higher not necessarily at the beginning but here every single year according to this particular index it rises at the beginning of the year then it starts falling so it means more agents start leaving their brokerage and then they 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 stay put then they leave their brokerage and then they stay put so i thought that was pretty interesting now let's get into and here's the uh, the breakdown the seasonally adjusted so basically how it breaks down you see more more people well let me say that less people are moving so you have less people uh, less agents moving from brokers to brokerage all righty let's look at the methodology because i think this might be important for us so the agent movement index is published monthly and features monthly and seasonally adjusted in 12 month trading values those were the three graphs that you saw here a couple of seconds ago the index is calculated using national level data from a large sample of the nation's most prominent mls's you can see how that how that happens here in two seconds the agent movement reflects the relative mobility of experienced agents between brokerages so it's agents that have experience aka have transactions not new agents that never do a transaction in many cases moving between each other the score is computed by estimating the number of agents who change brokerages in a given month and to be counted the agent must be a member of one of the analyzed mls's and they show all of the mls's so there's over 800,000. so it's a huge sample set almost half the market well 40% of the real estate agent licenses out there. So it's a huge sample set. This isn't 80 people, there's 800,000 members. Um, bum, 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 bum. So to be counted, the agent must be a member of one of the analyzed MLSs and change to a substantially different office name at a different address. So as you know, whenever you are submitting your data or whenever you look at the MLS, you have the office address, you have the office tag, you have, the real estate licenses and everything in between so what they're analyzing is that agent a that's experienced as transactions they've been under this particular under this particular office for a certain amount of time now we just noticed that there's been a switch they went from a to b so this from this brokerage to this brokerage so their seasoned agent they counted in this particular move so that's how they're able to do it because they're analyzing all of these data whenever there's a switch between what was previously populated for that agent and what is now populated for that agent that means that there has been a may uh, that has been a move in brokerage m a driven activity and re and and reflags are excluded as are new agents and agents who leave real estate so get so m a so if there's an, a merger they don't count that um new agent as our new agents and agents who leave the the so new agents agents that haven't done a transaction basically don't have the experience quite quite yet and then agents who leave real estate which was what i was alluding to earlier of agents that just leave the industry altogether so they hang up their lockbox they aren't counted here because there there wasn't a brokers that they moved into Efforts are made to exclude out of market agents and those which are MLS system artifacts. I don't know what that means. <laughs> the number of agents changing offices is divided by the number of agent act, act, agents active in the past 12 months in the analyzed market areas. The percentage is normalized to reflect the value of 100 at the level of movement in January. So this is when they started the index. The seasonally adjusted value divides the monthly result by the average of the same month in prior years. So basically what this is saying is as this index that they have here, as, as it continues to go up, that means that more peop, more agents are leaving brokerages or changing brokerages. And as it goes down, less agents are making a move. So what they're predicting here is that in 2024 is essentially going to be the year of mobility for real estate agents. So they're attributing the normalization of the real estate market. I don't necessarily know if that's true or not, but they're predicting there's a lot more real estate moves or a lot of licensees, li uh, licensee musical chairs to go around. So if you're in the recruitment business, now might be a good year to really focus on recruitment. If you're a broker or a team leader, now would be a really good time for you to focus on retention strategies to ensure that agents aren't distracted enough to go and look at other options which um is always the case so i thought this was an interesting article again that came via housing wire so let me know in the comments down below what you think about this is this 
Or do you agree with this particular graph? Because again, for me, in our experience, it just hasn't proven to be the case. It's actually inverted. But curious to get your take on it. So let me know in the comment section and I'll see you tomorrow.